Okay, we are going to go ahead and kick off our select board meeting at 636. Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda as presented? Several. Um, a lot has evolved in the last couple of days. I'm sorry. Um, most of this afternoon. One, do we have a select board delegation um, to handle the state parks for the RFP that needs to go out? So, actually, delegating a select board member to work with the state park committee to put together an RFP for the people process for, for FEMA? Correct. Yes, it's part of the damage that's done. Just to try to push it along so that the next time it's like for me, uh, they'll have a, hopefully a bit resurgence rather than you know, so we can get it out as soon as possible. Two, um, uh, select board delegation to sign the contract for the municipal building construction, pending um, confirmation for mitigation from FEMA. Um, three, an update on the municipal building. We already have that as number nine. So I think we can do that along with signing both with a number nine. For um, EWT grant, Winway Lane, uh, there's been an update as recently as this morning. Um, we've been making the decision between the EWT grant with USCA or CS and working with the um, That's the decision. Okay. Five liquor licenses for Rosemary. Um, six land purchases, a quote on land record, the land record book restoration for Rosemary. Seven, um, a quote on a water heater replacement for the municipal building. Approved. What was the last plan purchase? Water heater and what else? Um, land record book restoration. Okay. Um, eight. I was not able to hear back from anyone regarding the approval of the buyout application. And I'm wondering if that should be in real estate negotiations executive session or not. So nobody nobody could confirm whether that should be private or not. It's just the name and the address at this time. It's been private so far. I don't know. LCPC and Lauren did, weren't able to confirm. So I guess it's up to you guys whether it should be an executive session as far as real estate negotiations or we can do it in public. I'm not sure what the answer is. Um, I think it's probably okay in the public, but they're putting their name out and it's the first application to go through. And if it should be in the public, we can always redo it. Let's again. bump that to next next meeting. Let's get some answers on that from VLCT. Uh, VLCT. I don't think VLCT is going to have the answer on that. Or the state. Somebody needs to have an answer. No, I mean, but I guess somebody, it's VLC. I mean, we should be asking VLCT because if they don't have an answer, they're going to need answers for more towns than us. Like, that's what one of the Let me ask a question. Would the town be put at a substantial disadvantage in real estate important. negotiations? I think so. This is, I think, the risk, right? It's maybe not to the town, but to the property owner. To say they pull out and then try to sell their property, it's now on public record that they're considering this process. And, and would that put them at a disadvantage if they're trying to sell the property with that no means of did they sign a piece of paper? Did that... we ask them if they care if it's public? Mm -hmm. um, okay. But they have not volunteered. Uh, they've had opportunities to be published. I'm not sure. I think we want to, we can wait. Can you text me the name of the person? Maybe we already have heard from them. I can find my phone. Um, but okay, putting it on the list, we'll follow that up. Got it. Um, is there a timeline urgency with regard to? We're going to get a bunch more applications done Friday morning. There's five individuals coming in to possibly fill out more. Um, LCPC, Learn, and the state language management will be meeting at the United Church in Johnson. Um, the town of Johnson will be represented by Lydia, the notary, to get these applications together and in. So at our next select board meeting, we'll have. We need to bump the first one then. We should, it's better for us to talk to all six of them at the same time. Will that mean you need the church be public? No, it's just like a, really, it's just a group of, it's not a meeting, it's just a group of people coming together to support residents to fill up the application. It's just like a, a help session. 
So residents can come, ask that, questions. I mean, I'm just wondering if residents are going to a meeting that anybody can go to. Yeah, yeah, anybody can go. Yeah, and ask questions. And hear their names. I think it's more like going to coffee hour and saying, hey, well, either way, we need to just bump this. Yeah. So let's stop talking about it and move on. Do you have others? Uh, yes, two more. One is, can we discuss permission to close the office? Our, we're going to, uh, as soon as the uh, construction is done, uh, we're going to need about a week to close the office um, so we can step back up downstairs uh, to bring everything from upstairs downstairs once, once that process is so, done. That sounds like a joint meeting. Is that going to the um, village too? What do you think, Rosemary? Partnership. And then lastly is the uh, uh, Department of Libraries Capital um, Improvement Grant that Rick just came out that's due on March 12th and just it's kind of your good graces to proceed with investigating um, possibilities for that. Okay, got it. Anyone else have, yep? Two. Um, one is I'd like to uh, discuss the possibility of circulating a merger info sheet. Okay. Yep. And the other one is um, related to the highway capital budget as it appears in the town report. Um, I don't know if we'll make it to that. Or nope. Got that. it. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll maybe we can combine both of those as prep for town meeting. Yep. It seems it seems like they're both prep for town meeting items. Yep. Cool. Perfect. Anything else? Okay. Um, invoices and orders are going around, except I've stalled them because Evan's little tiny desk was not big enough. Um, consider approving minutes for February 5th. Okay. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Was that an aye? aye? Okay. And Shane? Aye. Okay, thank you. Ayes have it. Uh, select board issues and concerns. Any topics to bring up? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring up, um, I read a VPR article today um, about uh, the state hiring private contractors to help towns applying for um, there's up to a hundred million dollars in uh, FEMA aid available um, and it can be used for all sorts of things such as buyouts elevations uh, floodplain restorations um, infrastructure projects um, flood proofing of municipal buildings etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, I just wanted to make sure that was on everybody's radar and and that that was something we're hoping to dry, draw down. Meaning, <clears throat> if we can't find contractors, we go to the state. I, I think that, um, let me see, it, it looks like uh, it's the state, it looks like it's VEM that um, has hired people. Uh, Doug Farnham at the state is quoted in the article. Um, okay. Yeah. I it mean, sounds like they're just a lot assisting with contractors if you can't find them for your FEMA. I don't yes. think it changes what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have any issues or concerns? Okay. Um, plan purchases. Um, let me just ask. We have a lot of people here. Anyone in the audience with issues and concerns that aren't part of agenda items? Okay. Um, plan purchases, plow cutting edges. So I reached out to a couple of plow cutting manufacturers. One with their prices are going up in spring. Who's our Jason? This winter. winter. And you don't have another, you just have the one. The only one that got back. Okay. Any questions for Jason on the cutting edge? Yes. 
Are you making a motion? Oh, well, yeah, are you making a motion? Um, yes, I can. Do we have an exact number, Jason? It's on packet page. It's 90. 90. Uh, the invoice number for the invoice showed uh, so that's a one cent for a truck. That's a plow and clean. And I want to get two cents. So it says a quantity of two at a unit price of $995 with a total estimate of $1,990. So what you're asking for is <clears throat> That's about a thing. Okay. So my motion is to my motion is to not see people a thousand dollars for razor system. And you've got the, um, you're pretty confident that that's the best goal to this month in winter. I would second Mark's motion. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Shane? I, I didn't actually hear the motion. I was going to ask for it to be repeated before the vote. The motion was for up to $4,000 um, for the blades because it that quote that we have is for one set, not two sets, and the need is for two. So Mark motioned, Duncan seconded. Okay, and I'll vote aye. Thank you, okay. Uh, next up is the water heater. Can you speak to water heater and then the land the land record restoration? Well, so we called uh, the water heater in the town office has been out for, as many might know better, but at least a year or two. At least a year. Yep. Um, it's been repaired twice, uh, both times it failed shortly after. Um, I'm sure I had Lydia reach out to get quotes and the only one that was returned uh, was from the County of Plumbing and Heating for $3,090. And so, what does that include? It's a replacement and installation, installation and re replacement of the, the new water heater. Uh, same type, it's a 30 gallon propane tank in place. We did look into getting some on demand, so we, but uh, the distance from the faucets was too far. We had to have two on demand systems. One of each end of the building, which would have been more expensive. Yes. Okay. Any questions on the water heater? Yeah, Charlie. Why are we going with propane on the water? That's a really good question. So in the where it's located now, uh, we, we actually looked into this. You know, I still really so like just so people on Zoom can hear, the question was why propane not electric? And uh, can you be loud, Tom? Like loud, loud. So we, we really wanted a geothermal uh, electric heater in you know, efficiency Vermont had rebates that made it comparable to this world here. Um, unfortunately, the, there was no electricity within uh, to the close proximity of the existing water heater. So the cost to have the installation of the new electric new electric would have outweighed the efficiency gain. Um, so that's why we're just sticking with the propane um, as is in place. Okay. Any other questions on the water heater? It's upstairs and the only one that's not. <laughs> um, the other question is, have we talked to the village about this at all? Yes, and I got approval from uh, the village manager, did approve splitting this 50-50. Perfect, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to motion to authorize 50% of the new water heater. Yes. I'm going to fill it. I count that as a real motion. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Somebody get behind me here. Second. Not to exceed four thousand. Three thousand ninety dollars. Yeah, not to exceed three thousand one hundred dollars. Ninety. Um. I have a question. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, wait. We have a motion. Can we get a second first? Motion. I seconded. Okay. We have a second. You can pick the seconder. Okay. Go ahead. Um. 
for that amount of money shouldn't be determined to be reasonable to do an on demand electric. Do you think we could do it for that same amount of money? You know what? Can I call and get a quote just to run electric to that site? And then just if it, if with the rebate plus a new water heater and the electric work is reasonable, I'll come back in two weeks. Just to be clear, my motion was replace the water heater, not touch 230 under. If you want to give Tom Marks your orders of changing it, I think my motion still. Uh, I, I do, I do too. I think yeah. uh, my, my question really was related to the dollar amount. Gotcha. If it's up, we could do it. I think it's worth. I would rather have geothermal. Like this game time, let's do it. It's not going to be geothermal, but you want a heat pump. Yeah, a heat pump for me. Yeah, yeah, hundred thousand dollars for you. But yeah, I think we're yeah. good. I, good emotion. I, I think you got it because I think this is crazy. If it's up, up to the amount, right? Yeah, and if it's an overall comeback, I mean that's put in a lot of electric outlet. So we got a motion. Okay. That's it. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. And then the last is the restoration of the land records. Tom, restoration of land records. Oh, Rosemary. Okay. We got a quote from Cope Wild. Land record volume that had mold on it has been remedi remediated, and they have given a price of thirty three thousand two hundred ten dollars, which includes has reviewed the book and recommends that it be preserved in archival mylars, similar to the some of the books that we have already previously done before. So, so it's three thousand. It was three thousand. $210. And this is part of. And I would think this could come out of insurance money. So was it 33000 or $3,000? $3,200. $3, yeah. Oh, okay. But it'll be part of flood reimbursement of motion to prepare land record book, turn them out not to exceed. Is it 3300 33 not to exceed yeah. would be fine. Yeah. All right, not to exceed 3300 Second. All those in favor? Um, aye. Thanks. I have it. This is the one that had the mold on it. Right, that's the original one. It was the, they put it in the freezer. Yeah. I thought I thought we got the quote for like fourteen. So, yeah. That was did, to rem to remediate it. I believe. That was just to make it digital. They were just going to scan it. Remember back when we saw two folds yeah. one was about this. We asked for expertise. We got it. Okay, um, Rosemary, you're up next. Looks like you have a couple of license items and yes. other stuff too. I handed out an email regarding the cannabis. So, everyone, license. yep, this is for a renewal for MIPS cultivator tier one. Yes. That's mountain man weed, alternative mountain man weed, yeah. Upper French Hill Road. Where are you getting that? You're not supposed to say where I'm Oh, no address. Forget the address. Right here. This is a renewal. It says it's a renewal. I don't remember so ever I'm approving this. this last year. The, there's a sentence down here if you don't approve it within 45 days, it's automatically approved. So that's probably what happened. Motion to approve <laughs> renewal of Mountain Man Weed Cultivator Tier 2 license. So is that all correct, Rosemary? Yep. All right. Stupid question, but do these have to be renewed annually? These I believe, two? yes. Can we just let them all go to default? I'm not if they renew. Same as time. Yeah. I'll second. Did you move to approve? No, oh, yeah. I'll second. Mountain all those in Man favor? Weeds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. I mean, unfortunately, the voters voted for us to have a board because we thought it was a good idea before we knew yeah, that, that there was, was no in town meeting, right? Yeah. And I have a special event for Vermont Studio Center. 
for March 28th at six o'clock. Are you going past the That's a special liquor license? Yes, it's at seven o'clock, but between six and seven. Oh, crap. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Also, I have it. How many times are you coming back? This is not. Keep one. going. Yeah, you, keep, you just keep going. We're going right through. Jollies, uh, Group 15, have got a their liquor license and their tobacco license is up for review. Motion to approve for the law. Jollies. Of liquor and tobacco licenses, sending a common whatever letter. And pending a your payment of their liquor license fee. That's exactly what I said. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, all, the, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have it. Well, okay. got Rosemary. And just the budget status reports. Looks real bad. The good news is the BLCT paid us $5,000 for lost salt from the flood. BLCT did? Passive. Our Not insurance passive. company. Uh, That's the only thing I got. Why is that with salt? Oh, wow. Transfer, you get a question? Transferring the art button on to other revenue makes it look like that was a really good year. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see those numbers. Can I see that? It does. Because then you can get more out. Yeah. Do you have anything on source money? Thanks. So we have uh two hundred and ninety thousand four hundred twelve dollars ninety cents out for the flood so far. Two seventy five four. It's it's page one page one. It is the And that number is gonna get real big real quick. Yeah, but the good news is we'll be back in our office in a minute. It's great news. For reimbursement for the education. Huh? Did, did that get submitted? I think the invoice is getting submitted. Okay. For reimbursement for what? The debris. The debris. Yeah, you're fired from one record. We're anticipating getting 100%. So everything from July 7th to the through July 13th, 2005. How'd you say all right. I gotta pull up the dates, but there's a date window, and I believe it's till August 7th is 100%. Um, everything after August 7th is 75% reimbursement. Um, so that's that's a significant amount of it. So if we had waited to do debris cleanup like the rest of the world that did it very late. We would have been at 75%, not 100. Interesting. The, wrong. the first four the days would have picked us up. The first couple of days were 75% after our. Really? After July 13th. I believe so. August 11th. No, I don't think we did either. So, that's just a lot of people. I think we got our first. I think we got our first dumpster on the thirteenth or fourteenth, one of the two. But it was only one dumpster. And are you borrowing the state, or they are they passing legislation to send more money to the flood? Yeah. There was a press release. Today about a new funding opportunities. Yeah, it looks like it's from France. Um, but I have yeah, to speak to right now. The House has approved House incident vote for food direct direct money from the spellings. They're in conference committee right now. Uh, they have two more meetings scheduled for the plans. If it stays in its current form, uh, the formula is supposed to be proportional to town impact. And my understanding is that Johnson then would do 
possibly the best of all the next Johnson and Ludlow is each year since the best yeah. Again, that's conference committee. Anything to go sideways. Yeah, and I understand that. Do you have any more of the conditions on what it would go to? I don't. I just know there was direct direct aid to these problems. Okay. And there's a larger pool of like $30 million that's also in the city bill for uh, marriage. So I assume that the smaller pool of money is not, yes. not tied into that. Sure. Do we have any update on the funding of the, um, I think it's VEM, but maybe it's Maybe it's not. It's uh, the Stephanie Smith Department, whatever department she's in, of uh, emergency management management um, funding for buyouts that are outside of the flood zone. I know that within the flood zone, there flood zones there was funding already, but it was presented to the. Yeah, I think it was in the house, but I haven't seen. I I went to a, uh, like a webinar on Tuesday, and it, it wasn't decided yet. Then right now we're still working with the funding. I just want to make sure that we're factoring that into those six properties that we're talking about in their application. Whether they're going to be out of yeah. Oh, well, half of it isn't. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Yep. And it's true of a lot of the properties that were flooded. Yeah. Okay. Rosemary? I don't have anything more. Okay. Uh, um, Beth, I do, I do just want to add that I think that uh, based on what I read about the um, program I was talking about earlier, the, the hazard mitigation funding, one of the things that it will cover is buyouts outside of that um, FEMA mapped zone. Um, so, you know, there might, there's federal money out there um, that might be able to be used for that. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Shane. That's part of the, yeah, that's part of the buyout process, but yeah, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Um, cool. Okay. Where do we leave? Uh, community and economic development. So Randall, we have a couple of topics here around FEMA IRC community assistance. Um, do you want to speak to that? I think that's yeah, yours. Closer to Perfect. The computer so that I can yep. Shout. Um, I, I have a general update and then I'll get to the uh, other piece. So, uh, the industrial park, uh, I mentioned something earlier, the a grant application is stalled. Um, one of the things that they had flagged was wanting a letter of interest from a local business for interest in moving into the park. We scrambled. Uh, and got a letter that we were very excited to get and to submit, but the feedback from EDA was that the letter of interest was deemed to be neither quote clear nor convincing. Um, so that was that was disappointing. Um, and then, as I sort of mentioned before, the the app, the program is a disaster supplemental program, and so the folks at EDA wanted to have a very clear nexus between the flood and or other disaster and access to the money for the industrial park. And because they hadn't seen that nexus, because this is a project that's been going on for well before the flood, um, they were, though, interested in this very cursory discussion that we have talked about and potentially relocating the wastewater facility to the site. But their recommendation was to, you know, if we wanted to be successful in this application to essentially resubmit and fully incorporate the new wastewater facility as the primary purpose of the project, which I don't think fits with the vision that anyone had originally. And even if that was a decision to be made, we are not at a place where we could have a very compelling uh, application because we just don't have all the details worked out that we would need to have it be convincing as an application. So with that, uh, if we were to go down that path, of making that the primary function. And I know we don't have the evidence uh, that we need to provide for that, but if we were to, would that jeopardize Northern, Northern Borders funding? Probably. It would, it would introduce a yeah, great level of complexity to, to the project because the NBRC grant application was made with indications that it was for a very specific reason, a very specific purpose. 
Uh, and so when we reached out to them to talk about the possibility of the relocation of wastewater, they were agnostic because it was basically a tenancy. And so they were like, whatever facility or business you want to have in there is not really our concern as long as it fits within the general scope of the project that you proposed to us. Right. Um, so it, it is possible, I suppose, um, but I think it's time to like contemplate what's going to happen without that EDA money in terms of the, the project match for the NBRC grant. Is there any other EDA funding source other than this I, that we've gone after that would be logical? If there is, they did not convey that to us, but um, now let me make a note right here. I will, I'll ask Catherine if, you know, she has an alternative suggestion for us, potentially. Uh, And then, uh, so the NBRC piece of the industrial park, we're still kind of in the same spot of um, waiting for the partial notice to proceed. Uh, but we did, uh, I had a meeting, I convened a meeting with the folks from LCPC, Pat Ripley, and the folks from Mumley Engineering, because Mumley are, are the people who, we have the fastest track to utilize for doing NEPA, which is, I don't remember what the acronym is for, but it's a, it's a very intensive environmental review of the project site that's required by federal <laughs> grant makers. Um, and so they had proposed, a, they had put together an EPA proposal, which we submitted to NBRC and NBRC uh, approved that proposal, but there were some concerns cited that it was a very, um, a very bare bones proposal. And I think that's one of the issues with Mumley, not in a negative way, but I think Mumley is all about trying to really nail the, the right exact dollar amount. And they're not they're not accustomed to, well, what if you need this? And what if you need this? And what if you need this? And so we walked through all the potential scenarios of other things that could come up that they might need to uh, complete their NEPA review. Uh, and so that means a much more robust proposal in terms of a dollar amount, um, but it just then doesn't allow for the kinds of surprises that we have, you know, just minimizes surprises for you all because it's like, oh, we weren't expecting this cost. Well, now you, you now you can expect it. It may not happen, but it's better to have it there and have it in your minds and know that this is a possibility. Should an archeological review turn up X, Y, or Z, this is, you know, this is what's gonna happen, et cetera. So. So they're working on revising that. They're supposed to have it sometime either this week or next week. Once we get that again, LCPC, Pat, I will all go through it, make sure that it's covering all the bases, and then we can ship it off to NBRC. Uh, and, and then again, hopefully get a partial notice to proceed, which allows money to, to flow to the project. But the funding for that <laughs> piece was not the original contract proposal right right no there's certain other there is some overlap that was another thing that was discussed there are there are some things in terms of what they're doing now that has a nexus to the work that they would be doing but they're still separate and we discussed that piece of it uh and again once that gets approved then the work plan for the for the proposal for nbrc has to be revised as does the budget because that deeper proposal can be incorporated into the budget for NBRC. And again, we can get reimbursed for some of that. And that's the revised budget with Northern Borders. Right, yep. Uh, one last piece for the industrial park is the state just launched a, what they call the Rural Industry and Development Program. So again, we had another meeting about that where we talked with uh, someone from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development who's managing the program. And on the surface, it looked great. And then as it turns out that, that that program is specifically for developing, making improvements to industrial park sites, which is, you know, which is why we were excited about it and it would have added some money. But the problem is, is that the program's only, uh, the only way that you'll qualify for that program is if the local economic development corporation owns the sites. So we thought that it was just that they have to apply sort of on our behalf but it's, they can apply for it because they are expected to be owners of the sites that they're making the improvements on. We can change that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're serious about that, I mean, that, I, I mean, again, that's, I don't know how enthusiastic uh, 
they would be about taking ownership of it though you know that's a don't know if you don't ask yeah um. <laughs> uh i'll try to keep it moving moving here the last meeting you all um you all you all had two conversations about aarp community challenge grants uh and there was some overlap between folks in the community and uh so my my understanding from that meeting was that i was directed to kind of sort that out which i have done I met with Sue Lovering to tour the Arboretum and to sort of hear what her proposal was. I made the determination that I did not think that her proposal was compatible with the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail proposal because it involved an intensification. Yes, it had a similar set of items, but it involved really concentrating those items in one location versus the dis distribution of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail was considering. Um, in addition to that, I had a, I had a meeting with uh, Zach Smith and Jim McDowell at Vermont Studio Center just just as a more informational meeting to understand what they were up to and they were sort of filling me in on things that they might want to collaborate on, et cetera. And they mentioned that they were also applying for an AARP Community Challenge grant. So at that point, I was sort of like, well, there's going to be most likely there's going to be two, at least two applications. So we might just might as well just have three, except. Um, it just so happens that I found this like creative placemaking grant program from the, believe it or not, the National Association of Realtors. And uh, and they allow applications from local and regional associations of realtors. So I reached out to the uh, Lamoille Area Board of Realtors, LABOR, it's a great acronym. And uh, I pitched the idea to them and they said that they would review it and then they agree to apply on our behalf for it and so i have the details to them and the thing is they can only they can only recommend one project a year but they decided to recommend our project which one uh the arboretum project the money and the money it just so also happened that the money the dollar amount maximum for that program is almost exactly what the arboretum wanted it's it's actually it's actually exactly really it's well, 200 bucks difference uh, 200 bucks in excess so they can fully fund it if it's approved and again the good news on that one is uh it's once they once they submit it it can be it could be approved like the same day potentially it, it moves very quickly and the only and again there's no match and uh the only string attached is you know that the, the local realtor folks want to be there you know when the benches are put in place and all that sort of stuff. so pretty great hopefully that'll work out um we'll move on uh the so, grocery is oh real great. quick randall yes. does that mean that the town is applying for the rail trail project the realtors are applying for the arboretum project is it that's correct it? yep correctly? awesome yep Thank you. yeah and, and just as a side note I, I did reach out to aarp vermont uh and described the project the, the rail trail folks had in mind and it was very enthusiastic response you know saying that's exactly what they wanted and uh, again, you know, there's no guarantees, but you know, we're, we we were at least getting positive feedback. So, uh, let's see, the grocery is sort of in the same spot. I think you all probably saw the article in the Stowe Reporter um, that we're still. I'm waiting for to hear from the village about the USDA loan program that I mentioned to you all in my previous report. Uh, the Vermont Community Foundation again it is was sort of a piece I had in my mind when there was this sort of competing things with the ARP. So the, the their effort and interest in helping Johnson in some way is still out there. There's a possibility I have a call with them tomorrow. And now that some of these other pieces have fallen in places with other grant programs, that sort of allows what they might want to do in support to be applied to other things. I, I think I had mentioned there's some interest in uh, making improvements at Legion Field with the community oven and those sorts of things. So that might be, we might have funding there potentially for that. Uh, the Borac grant that I applied for, the deadline is a week away for making notifications. Um, they don't move very quickly there, I've heard, at the Department of Forest and Rec. So hopefully it'll, we'll find out within a week, but it could stretch out. Uh, let's see, only two more things. Uh, Green Mountain Byway, uh, I've been working, uh, some of you may or may not know that I've been working with Green Mountain Byway folks on their committee. Uh, there's an ongoing initiative in place uh, to install interpretive panels along the byway. There's already panels in Stowe and Waterbury. 
and now uh, Johnson, Cambridge, Hyde Park, and Morristown are all sort of on the docket to develop interpretive panels. And so I have folks from the tree board, from the conservation committee, the historical society, Vermont Studio Center, and the Green Mountain Club all uh, essentially what what these panels are is the sort of pan, you know informational panels that you'd see along a highway, or whatever. And they have these they have uh, several categories. There's recreation, historical, cultural, and natural scenic. So those groups I think kind of covered all, almost all of those bases. And basically what they do is they put together kind of a blurb some images and a potential site location. And then we take that back to Green Mountain Byways and we kind of set the hash it out and then work, you know, then we come back and we find out like, oh no, it's in the right of way, we can't do it. And, you know, all that, all that fun stuff. But it's just great that there's all these folks who are w willing and able to kind of do this and get, you know, potentially some. This is really byway is generally the rail trail. No, Green Mountain Byway is the, you know, like, 15 and 100 and all all the roads that connect all those towns yeah it's the place that people will see things so would there be a connection for the real train world yeah that could that could be one is uh, i think the green mountain club is doing the footbridge uh they, they may be doing like a this is how it was constructed sort of thing and then the placement is uh again to be determined sometimes it's good to have one like you know in a in a high trafficked place that says, oh, if you go here, you'll see this thing, you know, versus having it where the thing is. And if you're where the thing is, you already know that it was there. So the signage didn't really help, you know. So anyway. Get up to the Springfield Bridge. What's that? We want to get that. Oh my gosh, stop it. Do you get him? Uh lastly, uh, and this will tie into our, our guest here in a minute. Um the proposal to VCRT VCRT. BCRD's Climate Economy Resilient Communities Program was accepted. The, the, the you approved me applying at the last meeting. In the interim, it has been accepted uh, by VCRD, so they are going to allocate some resources to come here and develop some sort of project with us, uh, which could be anything. But it's it feels like what they did with Barry and developing a comprehensive flood recovery plan is a very strong option to have them kind of come convene meetings and kind of do a lot of the organizing and facilitation around discussions around all that stuff and produce this report with action items is something that they can do. It's funded. We don't have to pay for it now because we've been accepted into this program. And if that is the direction that you want to go in terms of like a flood recovery plan, um, that, as I said, dovetails into, uh, I gave you information about uh, Sam Young, who works with FEMA, in their community recovery program. Uh, I think Mark worked with Sam in the legislature. I worked with Mark in the, I mean, not with Mark, with Sam in the legislature. And uh, it's just, I'm just really happy to have someone that I know personally that I can talk to about this and work with them and potentially work with us on, on this as this the direction you all decide you wanna go. And uh, so we have Sam here. Do you wanna fill them in, Sam, on sort of who you are and what you can offer to the town? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, my name's Sam Young. Um, I I did serve in the legislature for 10 years with Randall and with Mark. Um, last summer, after the floods came, I was the first Vermonter actually hired by FEMA. I worked in a different role through the fall. Um, but so I work with community assistance um, in the in, and it's a group called Interagency Recovery Coordination. And so this is, it's not public assistance, which replaces your damaged infrastructure, and it's not individual assistance, which helps individuals with their homes, but this is more for the community-wide planning. And so this is a perfect um, symbiosis with the VCRD grant. If, um, if you do do a recovery plan, our group in inside of FEMA is here to help support whatever those outcomes are. Um, we work with under the, the National Dis Disaster Recovery Framework. And the idea is that recovery is locally led, it's state managed, and then it's federally supported. So the idea is that Johnson would do a recovery plan. And then we're here to help you guys implement that plan. Um, and, you know, help help organized funding sources and that sort of thing. It's 
raw it's interagency recovery coordination because it's a, a kind of a consortium of federal agencies um we we call them recovery support functions um there's the infrastructure rsf which is supported by the u.s army corps of engineers economic which is the economic development administration natural and cult cultural resources which could be um uh, watershed stuff or uh, historic buildings, um, health and social services, and then also housing. Um, and so basically, I just wanted to come here, uh, introduce myself, let you know that there's a Vermonter that's working with FEMA to help connect. And I was basically hired to connect with local communities and make sure that the work you're doing is supported and plugged into the FEMA FEMA mission, and this is, um, you know, what I'm here to do is is help uh, communities that were badly hit recover. And I guess the one thing I I would also mention is that they early on it, through the fall they did an analysis of the towns throughout Vermont that were both hard hit and then had the least re resources to respond. And Johnson was one of those eleven towns, and that's why I reached out to Randall to because I I feel like Johnson is hard hit, but also big enough to actually go through this recovery planning process. And it's something that Waterbury did during Hurricane Irene, and it was really successful. Um, it, you know, brought the community out to do a visioning of what they wanted to see their community like in the future and how they wanted to recover. Um, and so I just, you know, want to make myself available and let you guys know that I'm here um, to help connect you with that process that through for recovery. Great. Thank you for that. Thanks for the introduction. Um, well, sorry, you can't see us. <laughs> you can watch other select board meetings to see us. Um, but we really appreciate that. And I think we probably need to have some discussions about what it means to create the plan you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but um, and I want to say, just regardless of whether or not you do a plan, if there are projects that are, um, you know, outside of just public infrastructure, pu public assistance, replacing your existing infrastructure that you need help with, that's okay too. I'm here to as a resource for that as well. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so since you're already connected with Randall, we'll probably um, discuss what that means for us as a board and um, maybe continue that liaison through Randall, at least initially. Um, but that sounds good. Any questions from the board? No questions. Not hearing any questions, but okay. thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate your time. Nice to meet you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Um, okay, cool. Thank you for that, Randall, for all the updates. Um, that's a lot of different pieces. There is one more item that we have, Randall, with under the Community and Economic Development, um, which is the FEMA IRC Community Assistance. Is that what this was? Yeah. That's what this was, it's okay. The, the Perfect, okay. Uh, Charlie, you have your hand up. Yeah, in Randall's report, did you say that you can't get a grant because you don't have a grant? <laughs> Not exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's they the 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 program itself wants what they consider a um, uh, well, as it was described to us, was a letter of interest. What we thought we provided was a letter of interest, and the the language around that seems to vacillate between letter of interest and letter of commitment. To me, a letter of interest is distinctly different than a letter of commitment. Commitment seem like irrespective of the current state of the property, we're we're going to relocate here and we're going to set up operation, et cetera. The letter that we provided did not say that with that level of certainty, but it said it was you know, definitely an option that we would want to explore because of recent flooding, et cetera, et cetera. So we thought it was a letter of interest. <laughs> anyway, EDA decided uh, that they did, you know, did that it didn't suffice. And so we kind of, that was a complication. That was one of several complications that they bring. Well, the biggest, I mean, I think the bigger issue, from my understanding, was that um, they want it linked to recovery from some sort of devastating event, 
And the fact that the project's been ongoing for so long, that was a really big sticking point too, that it wasn't in response to recovery from an event. The letter, I can't reveal who wrote the letter. It's confidential. Fine. I was reading this uh, flood mitigation program for the trust in PC. It was due to the record in August of 2021. And to mitigate flood damage, they suggested a complete reorganization of the storm market property. That's from 2021. So they get flooded in 23. If they relocate to the industrial park, they're recovering from flood damage and they're anchoring the industrial park. One of the problems with redevelopment of store market, from what I've heard, I've not seen any plan. They're talking about a six foot wall, which runs smack dab in the form based building, form based building occupation. So rehabilitating where they are. Problem. It's problematic for a couple of statements. One, flood mitigation. And two, farm based code. So I don't know if that would spray them to be a little bit more familiar with that. Or a dollar. One dollar. So um, that's slightly different than the industrial park uh, and it's private property. So we can't tell them what they what to do, but uh, I hear you on the form based code and also on the flood mitigation and they have been working with Scott Meyer, who's the our flood mitigation officer on um, okay. mitigation efforts by adding a wall and what that would mean. Um, so there are, are conversations around mitigation efforts around uh, around adding the wall. For what that's worth. It doesn't it doesn't address your issue with moving the store to the industrial park, but again, it is not well. It's an option for the town and people who are watching from the outside. Whether the property owner wants to to or not is a whole different discussion. Could be. Um, I can't speak to that. Um, okay. Anything else for Randall? Thank you for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for all the digging into many, many grants. Yeah, and getting creative with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like saved yet, but it's everybody's, because everybody seems to be happy with, you know, and we'll live with whatever the results are of the application of the three step process. Is there will there's some sort? Okay, let's move to, um, I don't know where, this is way down. Let's, um, okay, Jason, yeah. Good evening. Hi. So, uh, we need a presentation this month, and I didn't see you guys the last one. Uh, right down at the meeting, so there's some stuff that uh, we tackled. You know, we'll change the shop around a little bit, and uh, we'll shop now 100% compliance with OSHA. All through, like the Iowa station, the rest of the first day. Can you come close so that we can pick up what you're saying? Don't spill your drink, please. Yeah, you can save that one. I don't know if it was a save, but you picked it up. <laughs> uh, so the first eight kids, everything are up to date. Uh, we put new windshields in truck 20, 19, and the low one. Truck 19 and 20. Four orders on one, five orders on the other. Sand. In the snow, it's on the windshields and scuffs them up, and they failed a safety inspection. Through allegiance, so we had to replace them. And uh, the low pro had a crack. Truck 19 is no longer in warranty. So, enough to lie on. Uh, truck 20 runs out this August. Uh, 
Allegiance put a new brake valve in truck 20 under warranty. Uh, the air tank on truck 19 was not under warranty. We did that in house. Um, so at this point, truck 19 and 20 are both good to go. We have no other known issues. Not just time, no? Perfect. Yeah. Um, the tow behind your brake is completed. We turned it into an electric over hydraulic your brake so it can be ran behind any piece of equipment, not just uh, equipment with hydraulics. So it can be ran behind the pickup and stuff too. Uh, we've been working on taking down some compromised trees for the last few storms, snow loads, and one of them broke. So we've been cleaning those up. Getting uh, the equipment ready for the upcoming seasons and um, salt. Mud uh, season? <laughs> we've had too many mud seasons already. Uh, <clears throat> the salt usage is down from where it usually is, which is good. And it hasn't been cold enough to affect the usage from the flood waters because it's you know it hasn't been below zero. So nothing's really froze up. Good. So it's all going through pretty well. Uh, the village is having good luck with it too. Uh, the sand though, the sand pile were a little above average for this time of year. And mainly because of all the rain, freezing rainstorms. And then just to touch base a little bit on the cut edge. So I reach out just so you get some background. A lot of the vendors don't offer some of the things that we're looking for, like the segmented blades, or there's some new blades out that have a carbide impregnated blade. So you don't have to. Well, they're not. They're they're actually cheaper because uh, the old school way, you run a carbide blade and a steel cover blade. So you're buying two and you're running thicker and it doesn't cut as good. And this new blade that we started with last year, it's, it's, we're going to get, it looks like we're going to get three, maybe four years out if it keeps doing what it's doing this year. But uh, the wear is a lot better. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, cool. really good that's good. I guess that's everything I have. Except for Evan's homework that I need those signs so we can get the, them put together for the weight limit. Now, you want to come right off that? Or are we going to touch base on that just a little bit here? Okay. We can do it now. Do it. Go. All right. So I went to a meeting, mm -hmm. me and a couple of the guys, and um, for the road posting. And uh, DMV was there. It was all DMV, really sponsored. Uh, so if we post the roads with said signs mm -hmm. and the map that Tom included in the packet, correct? Yeah. Uh, like we have done in the past. And we, Tom, updates the website and shows this, uh, and if there's a problem, they will come then. The will, DMV will come. And they'll enforce. They're short-staffed. They were clear about that. So they'll come, and they'll do, they might not be able to come every time if there's an issue, but they'll come and do a few days here if we want them to and kind of make their presence known. And we do have some legs to stand on if we choose to, you as a board, with enforcement. Uh, especially with the agricultural side of it too. If uh, sugar makers or farmers are using vehicles that aren't registered agricultural, as agricultural vehicles, they can be held liable for one and not be held, and they'll, the MB will come find them. And with, uh, there's a cost. So if we can hold them accountable and the board can decide to send them a bill and they'll be responsible for said damage to said road. That's what I got out of it. I don't, the, wait, what do you, uh, there, there's a cost to the person, the driver. Or the company or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't mean there's a cost yeah. to us. There's there's a cost to yeah. them. Yeah. I got you. The labor that we take to fix it and the material. Yeah. 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 And they were very adamant too about the paving side of it. It's a big deal on the paved roads, especially as posting because they found even on states' roads uh, with the uh, running heavier weight trucks that they've been allowing, uh, that is causing the pavement to delaminate and fail quicker. And the Fed 
is looking to raise the weight limit because they're coming out with electric trucks mm -hmm. and the batteries are heavier. So they're trying to figure out a middle ground. Gotcha. It's like 30,000 30, pounds. It's like significant. Yeah, it's a significant rise. Of the weight horse. Yeah, an increase to the weight that they want to build the That's ground trust. Yeah. But you're absolutely right about the damage to paper trucks. Yeah. Can be equally or worse, equally bad or worse than gravel roads because it's a lot more expensive to fix. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all of this places contingent on not having an egg plate. Well, the, it's so they can have an egg plate, you're free range. Within standard zero, you can run, but you can still be held liable to have right. set, said problem fixed. Like, if there's a problem with the road it, that vehicle is clearly caused, we can build them. If it's all done, if this is all done, like the roads and the website and everything's all up to date, that we can do, you know, we can do it. What's, what's really clear is if we don't post it, there's no recourse. Yeah. Send the post them. Legal, legal. Yeah, a motion. Huh? Is that a motion? Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Did you get the Aye. motion? Well, it sounded like the motion was just to post the roads. Do you want any more detail than that? Uh, do you want me to say the weight limits? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Be just post the, the roads. It's fine. Just post the roads. Post the roads yeah. and, and you, would, you would want it to be on the website. You would more than posting the way that you want it to be done. Yeah. The because the procedure in accordance with state statute, right. right. to put it on DMV okay. and, and every road. And so then I would put that in there, post roads in accordance with state statute. Yeah. All in this and all that. Yeah. What do you do when you post it? That's a big question. This right. could have been like- Could they have cost the votes? Yeah. That's what they did say. The, the tongues were there for this. They are working on it because the winners are getting different and Obviously, we get more mud seasons, and there's been a lot of towns that were affected. They said with trucks being able to run on the roads, and you know the last two mud seasons that we've had this year. Yeah, you know, I remember talking about March 15th. Yeah, what's the standard begin date? And that's no longer. Yeah, so we'll, we'll begin February 23rd. Well, just next week. It's going to take some. Uh, these signs got to. You got to sign them, and I got. You're the road commissioner. Can we motion for Jason to sign? You have to. It has to be the road commissioner. <laughs> but all the signs have to get redone because obviously all the old signs are on the old sign posts and everything, and we got to take them all off and all the little straps that hold them on. But my plan with these, if you're planning on being the road commissioner. For I'm planning on being here next year. All right. So I was going to get them laminated because a couple of years ago, I town bought some sheets that we put over them and they'll put them in the laminator and then we'll get them laminated. Just do it. And then we'll get rid it. Just do it. I love it. Well, okay. The sheets are expensive. Okay. It's under $1,000. I don't want to hear about it. Okay. Okay. Um, so we, do so we have. We, by the way, the motion passed unanimously. Do we need to set dates right now? Or can Evan, yeah, as road commissioner, okay. Well, what's the proposal? What do you want next Friday? Weather price, when we get all the signs done. It's going to be warm next week. Yeah. I mean, we'll do all we want next week. By next Friday. Is that what it is? Yep. It's usually what we do. All right, so I would say March first through usually it's April, April, April thirtieth is what we usually yeah. do. Deal. Okay. March first, April thirtieth. Do you need a motion for that? I think we said it. No, because you're going to be filling out those papers. It'll be right on there. Yeah, we need a motion. Yeah, we need a motion. Yeah. I would move uh, that the roads be posted in accordance with state standards uh, from March first to April thirtieth. Do a second. I'll second it. Any discussion? Did people read the last sentence of Tom's discussion on this? Yes. Wow. Okay. 
basically, you know, um, there there are going to be people out there that are going to try and move move overweight when the roads are frozen solid. You know, I was talking to a logger today. Does this allow that, or basically, we're saying? It allows it as long as we treat everybody with the same. What what we have done in the past is allow the discretion of the road commissioner and the road farmer to allow <laughs> trucks, <laughs> road <laughs> farmer, road commissioner, road farmer <clears throat> to uh, to make one way trips. Um, you know, it, it, you know, depending on conditions. So if it's early morning and the roads are frozen. And it's been, you know, frozen for two days. Um, you know, we've given that authority to, to Jason to allow those trips. So, do we want to give that authority this year? Yeah, I, I we should. I Is there a motion? So, because... Motion. So I'll move that we give Jason the authority to allow. Did we vote on our yes, last motion? Did. Okay, sorry. Everyone in favor of the dates. Aye. 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 I just have it. It should just be an amendment to that. No, it can be separate. It doesn't matter. It can be separate. Yeah. Go ahead. So it seems to me that I will. Yeah, I will make a motion that we um, trust Jason to um, enforce the weight limits when they are causing damage to the roads. Does that? Narrow it down to. I don't want to say. When I don't the, think when the forces it. Okay, when the temperature is below ten degrees. I would say we can. authorize him to allow okay. individual trips. I don't care if they make twenty trips if it's in the middle of the night. The roads frozen solid. Yeah. Just say to authorize trips. Yeah, but Tom, no, he doesn't have the floor. We have the floor right now. To authorize trips. Okay. So we have a motion for Jason to be authorized to allow trips, to authorize trips. Do we have a second? That is all discussion. I'll second that. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, it technically can't be at my discretion. We have to have a Clear cut what we're going to allow is home for calls because everybody has to be designed. So, you're, you're, you're saying like if it's at your discretion, discretion and you can set that and it can be published. And then, two so, months. right, that that goes along with what we're talking about. I mean, really, we, the only requirement is that it's posted on the DMV website. I'm not sure that data is in place for the addition of to contact Jason. But we can put something on our website. Well, it seems like this is a rulemaking thing. You and Jason are going to get together and decide how this is going to actually play out. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Technically, it is, but what I took out of it, and he took out of it, and the other guys that were with us from our department, it's technically the board that has to do this, not Tom. Authorized individual truck? No, oh. the board has to come up with the detail. Uh, well, with that, we just did. We just did. Our rule is you're authorized to allow truck usage. Like that's our rule. When, when in the well, we didn't yet. We have to vote on it still. But well, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting perhaps an amendment, <clears throat> which would clarify. I don't know if this would make you feel any more comfortable when, when in your best judgment. Allowing such trips would not cause damage to the highways. Is that a friendly amendment? Yeah, it is. It is but okay. Who seconded, Donna? Um, friendly. All right. Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Sure. Wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Right. Next wonderful. topic. Do you have anything else, Jason? I don't. I can make some calls to everyone's cell phone number.
Yeah. And do you need to be there for um, his cell phone number is already on the website um, for anyone who's looking for it? Um, do you need to be here for the Lendway grant? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to get into it right now. I'm just asking the question. Okay. Okay. Up to you. Um, I just want to propose that we shift our uh, agenda a little bit and allow for people who are in the audience who have very specific agenda items. Specifically, I think we should talk about the Public Service Award, followed by Holcomb House, followed by FEMA Skate Park. I know I'm jumping around a bit, but... Um, so Public Service Award, are you speaking to this? Or is Eric speaking to this? You can open it, yep. And the folks who are eligible are people who have been in service to the town for 20 years plus. Yes, elected or appointed 20 years. Elected or appointed for those on the call who and it doesn't have to be in the same capacity. It could be multiple different capacities, yes, multiple. as long as it's continuous. And multiple offices in one year do not count for anything more than one year's service. A lot of the people who have served over 20 years in the community have worn many hats and that's quite a true job, I think. So we're going to pick a date. The location, I think. I don't know, the board member is not supportive of the idea. Hold that one quick. Go for it. I won't be on the board. We would, wouldn't we need to coordinate? Now's the time for you to secretary staff's office here. Eric's specific ask is to sponsor the event if the board wants to do it. I was checking over that before we made a motion. Decide on a venue, <laughs> authorize the expenditure for the banquet. Ask girls may for office to talk with personnel help and, and identify the individuals meeting the qualifications. And for them, for uh, to ask Rosemary to submit to the Secretary of State. So I don't think we have to ask if Rosemary is willing. The office staff is willing. We do that. You got the capacity? Yeah. And additional authorization for invitations to be sent out. So I would just propose that a month is chosen, and then based on venue availability, you pick a date. We should make a motion to just approve like 50 grand or something. You're not going to be here. <laughs> you can have a nice picture. I'm a responsible adult, Evan. Um, we could what? Have a nice picture for that price. Sure. Yeah, right. It could be, could be a party. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Girl seems like a good month. No, that's probably too soon. Yeah, May seems like a good month. I think June. Does June seem like a good month? Could you throw a month at me, please? The thing with June is that people are starting to travel and graduations happen a lot. If you have kids, a lot happens in June. Um, I would just throw out there May might be better than June, end of May. End of May. So late May. And I'm just going to throw this idea out there. Could we ask Tom to work on finding a venue and getting votes so we can actually just approve the expenditure mm. at our next meeting? Shooting for late May. I can make a motion to sponsor the event, but. General agreement. Are you talking catering or are you talking about fundraising event for? To uh, certain people that are older than Derek, they said uh, sixth grade is the I'm talking about Eric, not you. <laughs> They're not doing a town meeting, so I was wondering. But if we could ask if they're interested in doing something like that, Tom, 
I think that'd be great. Who is that? Oh. Uh, the sixth grade class. Uh, Johnson. Or PTA. They'll be already going. But huh? You can ask. Sure. Well, I have. So Tom, reach out to me if you if you get a no from them. Reach out to me. There may be others who want to fundraise. I can help connect you with people. So I'm looking for a venue, a date, and sixth grade. An approximate location size. You're not looking for sixth grade. <laughs> You're looking for somebody who wants to like do a potluck and raise some money. Good luck. Uh, society. Okay, anyone who's interested listening to these mini reading the minutes or um, listening to the, so the, the discussion there, I think that answers all the questions. I'm not missing yep. anything. Get to start. Yeah, if we have something. Maybe if somebody with an hand in the pizza oven, that'd be good. It's true. Don't go after town hall. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Eric, for reminding us about this thank you yeah thank you okay let's move on to holcomb house holcomb house let's move to holcomb house let's so there was a lot of discussion in our last meeting around all things holcomb house uh repairs who is I, I don't. I was kind of out of it in our last meeting. Sorry, I don't know. I'd be prepared to make a motion. Okay. The motion would be to approve the contract from under the eaves. Is it that? Um, <laughs> in the amount of that contract, and I've got it here somewhere. Um, and to have the, <laughs> the historical society. Cover 50% of the cost and the town cover 50%. Today. Yeah, what do you mean by the historical society? I think that, I think it would be up to the town to approve that Okay. And Go last ahead. time it was slightly under 50. It wasn't the full 50%, right? That 4,000, whatever the total amount was, was less than 50% of the total cost. It is. However, my motion would be to split the cost equally. So just to be clear on your motion, your motion <laughs> is that you're proposing that the Historical Society uses 50% of cost from their reserve funds? No. Or from whatever? From where? From wherever non-operational the, budget? They provide 50% of the funding and the town provides 50% of the funding. But just to be clear on the town, you're specifically talking about operational budget. Is the town part of operational funding? It's part of the town 50%, right? Let me rephrase. Is historical society coming out of the operating budget potentially or somewhere else? In your proposal, their funding source, it would be whatever the historical society wants to propose for its funding. And that could be a combination of reserve funds, historic society reserve funds. It could be if, if the 501c3 wants to kick in some money, the 501c3. Okay, I'm saying we should leave it up to the historical society to come up with 50% of the cost of the project. I'm just going to keep asking clarifying questions. So could part of that be their remaining budget balance from our operating budget? Could be, they could. Okay. They've got some money in the current operating budget, that's about 6,300, I think, 6,700. Yeah, okay, okay. No, but like, are you talking about the building maintenance? Building maintenance. Oh, yeah, the building maintenance line, yeah. 
Okay, I I understand now what your motion is. Your motion is from their available funds, whatever they have allocated to them. And then the the town portion would be operating budget out of the select board budget line, essentially around uh, maintenance and repair. Um, can we get a second before we move on? If anyone's interested. Okay, discussion, go for it. Emotionally include the amount. It seems like you were going to say the amount, and then you didn't have it right in front of you. I don't, because I might be able to find it. I said 14000 dollars something like that. Yes, it's another thing, 9532 Here you go. Found after that amount. Charleston Fire and Garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. That's um, my understanding of it. It's my, my understanding that Johnson Farm and Garden was going to donate the paint deck. Is that correct? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, what does that mean, the amount? What do you mean? Oh, I'm not it doesn't change the, that it doesn't change change the contract the amount. amount. It's not a deduct. 13 what? 9. 13, 9, Yeah, and that was just over four thousand. Yeah. So, six fifty. So we will be on the hook for six thousand nine seventy six fifty. Yeah. Where was my oddball question? Mostly because I just looked, at, like, just barely picked it up. But under buildings and grounds for historic society, we're $4,100 overspend. I can't remember you looking at. Of uh, 57 80. 57 80. That's that one. That's the historic society money. What was the budget amount on that um, line? Twelve hundred. And the spend amount? Five thousand three hundred and one. So you're saying the overspend is four thousand. Yes, we're for that amount. Huh? That that includes the under the EVs payment. Oh, that was out of the their reserve. out of the reserve fund that just kind of went through that. No, okay. So there's your um, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Didn't remember seeing it last time. Okay. Any other questions before we vote? So we don't want to stick to the request of reducing expenditures by five percent. That was my big one at the last meeting. I'm not saying it has to be a fantastic question. I don't know how that relates to the motion that I made. Yeah. So you understand um, what I will be voting. And that was my concern. That's fine. We'll call the vote. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Ayes have it. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Uh, next up is FEMA Skate Park. Was that an ad? Uh, that was an ad. The um, request was to so sign a select one number? Yeah, so the RMG is being prepared to come up with a possible replacement of structures and also in our plea for a using mitigation funding for a replacement structure. Is that correct? That's my understanding is there's going to be two RFPs and to make that process faster and more efficient. Could the select board delegate one member to work with Casey and Ron Rajensky put just approve that RFP, make sure it looks good so we can get it out within the next two weeks rather than having to come back to the board, approve the RFP, and then put it out? To be clear, you're talking about two RFPs or one? 
He's talking about a board member working on the RFP. No, no, no. I, I, believe, I believe at this point it's just one for wooden to replace the wooden structures. We need those costs. But this is an elongated project, so there eventually in time there will be two. We could come back to the board and ask for a second delegation if you'd like. But it was just one delegation to work with Casey and Ron for the FEMA skate park versus purposes so they can move forward in the next six months and get this thing. So that way the <laughs> only thing you're going to see next is the request to expend money for the response to those bids. Um, just kind of work, having a select board member kind of facilitate that process into the next step so it's a little smoother so it's not coming back to the board, waiting two weeks, coming back to the board, but just getting the RFP out Getting, getting the dollars that we need lined up for FEMA, so then we can produce the final RFP and get those bids out to contractors. Yeah, uh, just to clarify, um, the RFP draft I saw had a scope of work that was a little bit broader than that and had repairing other bits of damage. And that's why the RFP was really for a general contractor. To right, but it's, it's, so it's a single RFP right now for yeah. FEMA, essentially for FEMA. Okay. The idea is to streamline the process rather than having to wait for the next meeting, such approval. Right. Any select board members interested? Uh, Mark, you're volunteering. Well, she's got to nominate. I'll nominate Mark. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll vote on that one too. Are you going to vote on that one? I did. No, no, Mark, are you going to vote on that one? Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Mark it is. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. Wonderful. Go ahead, Kylie. I know I sent some questions out to Tom, and I did show them to Beth as well, and I wanted to give you guys plenty of time to try to answer those questions. And as you look at, like, the skateboard park as a whole and coming up with a plan, is there a, I know that what you've been working on, Casey, has bringing in another cement structure. Um, is this is not about new structures. This is about replacing damaged right. existing. Well, yes, and replacing damaged existing with items that are concrete or things that are more space taking up than what was currently there. And I'm curious as to, before some of these structures go in, if there'll be a removal of dirt for the amount of items that have already been brought into that space, including the first concrete structure. Let Tom answer. Yeah, so nothing will be able to go into that park until the floodplain permit is filled out and to make sure we're in compliance with Act 258. And it's extremely comparative that we follow those guidelines in our own rules or else people won't reimburse us, right? So it's, it's, this will be done in accordance with our own permit structure. Um, and so, uh, most recently, we had a half pipe um, that was approved to go in this spring. Um, and part of that was a floodplain permit application so that it's a one to one. So the volume of concrete will be removed and the, and the volume of soil. And actually, in that floodplain permit, it actually acknowledges the soil that was brought in and that would be removed as well. So there's actually additional soil being moved out. So to, Things are actually right. But I, but I have been reading back through some of the minutes to prior to. Even when it first was established, and it was always the ratio of whatever was brought in was being taken out, which has not happened. Stuff has been brought in and nothing has happened. Are you talking about perfect. like the staging of some of the soil for the half pipe? Um, or? well, no, I mean, I know there were truckloads brought in that were. I mean, I'm sure Casey can attest to the bed truckload device. Are you talking about since the flood or after the flood? Right. I was going to ask if you could tell me about a year because there was like a plan at one point, obviously before the flood, about um, getting some ditching material and staging it there so that the half pipe work could be done and everything. And I believe in the most recent iteration, that's going to all be brought back out anyways, because we are working with um, Scott to make sure he has some decent ideas on displacement of equal volume. Uh, am I answering the question? Are you talking about like years and years ago? I think, so you're basically saying it hasn't happened yet. No, it hasn't happened yet. And and there's questions in my mind as far as how much concrete was brought in and how much fill has brought in. 
and it should have been followed at that time prior to the flood that happened in July. Stuff should have been brought out for the amount of stuff that had been already put into the park. So in a sense, this is this is, this is almost a negligence on the state work on not just not you not the state work yeah. in general, but on the town as a so, whole to follow the percentage right. that were first lined up in 2017. So the most recent flood permit application actually acknowledges that and has a plan for alleviation. So I think your point is valid and it's heard and it's actually being acted on. Um, it's just it's in the middle of winter. So soil was brought in. I think this might be a little bit of a miscommunication. <laughs> soil was brought in and stayed in anticipation of this half fight. I think the project started two years ago. Um, it's way behind schedule. And the soil, we, the cart was put ahead of the horse. Understood. And so the application acknowledged that. And so that half pipe is going to go in, that soil is going to be used to build the berm around it. That total volume is going to be calculated as per the floodplain application permit. And then it's going to be removed. The, the remaining soil that was brought into stage is going to be removed, plus the additional amount that equals the total volume of the concrete plus the berm. And so that way it's going to be a one-to-one -one at the end of the project, which is scheduled before June 30th. It should be completed before June 30th. So I checked for the staff to 50 people, and the last flood plain from over there was 2017. 2017. And that doesn't say anything about what we're going to Yeah, I just filled one out with, with Scott Meyer. I think it was in September, October. Um, and so I'll reach out to Scott and just figure out the next steps. What we have, you know, if, if they don't have that permit, then we need to make sure that they have it. And the, um, According to the last information I have, is that uh, the planning commission acts as the zoning board of adjustment for flood plan permits, and we've not seen it. We've not seen it. Okay. So they don't so, have flood permits, so I know. So um, I can tell you, a permit was filled out in October. With Scott Meyer, I'll reach out to Scott, and what we'll do is we're going to we'll get in contact with the planning commission. And Act 250, and just make sure that everything is in compliance. The project has not started yet, so this, we're still we're in a good position to make sure we can make it into the public. Thank you. 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 Th
Um, but I just received a text message from Ron. He's on as well, but I'd like to read that. Um, so FEMA can't guarantee FEMA reimbursement, interior fleet bus work, or the exterior re resiliency. It has to go through CRC, right? Nobody can guarantee anything until we run through the whole FEMA process. But as many approvals needed before payment to the town, but the town was on the right track and it's time to spend money. Mitigation review would proceed. Completed during interior work, which is his best advice to not hold up the office returning to normal. Um, so it sounds like Ron's on, on, the, on Zoom, Did but it sounds like we should move forward um, with this contract and get the inside back together. Did anybody look at the last minutes? So I thought, or maybe the prior minutes, I forget, but I thought we had given you authority to sign. I thought you gave Duncan the authority to work on the contract. With yeah, you. it was it was drafting. Yeah, I, I, I would move to authorize Tom to sign the contracts when it's been the appropriate time to do so. And uh, they are scheduling construction starting on Wait, Monday hold morning. Up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Um, they're starting construction Monday morning, so we'll have this contract hopefully signed uh, before the end of the week this week. And the contract is already signed. Gotcha. That's the sign. That's the wedding right there. I need that back. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. Are they starting it on the inside Monday morning? They're doing the inside first. Uh, stage one is they're bringing three storage containers. Um, Jason will be providing a 10 wheeler and a loader for. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Rosemary will be working with VSAR to go through all the records and all the filing cabinets. So on Wednesday night, Rosemary needs a bouquet of roses from every one of you because all paperwork is going to be uh, removed from the building and in order and sorted and organized. So she has a hard day Monday. She's going to have the state there to help her, but it's it, it's an enormous task and it needs to be acknowledged. Um, and then the whole downstairs will be emptied out so that they can replane the floor and prepare for construction. But um, it's going, Monday's going to be sheer chaos and there might not be a lot of activity upstairs. Does this directly, okay. In the motion on the floor. Um, that's a little bit more than the motion on the floor. So the motion on the floor is for Tom to sign the contract. I just want to get votes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice, have it. Okay. And then you had added also closing the office for a week as a different item, but I think it ties into this item. Can you authorize Rosemary to close the office sorry. for a week when necessary? Actually, sorry. Our motion was for Tom to sign municipal and library repair contracts. What was the motion? Um, I, I think people just said the contracts. They didn't specify what contracts they were talking about. Can we just clarify whoever moved? I moved it. Um, are we ready to go on a library contract? Then my motion would be municipal. Municipal. Uh, I think we deal with the library afterwards. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Okay, so municipal is still our topic. And closing the office for a week, when did you say that that would happen? Um, Isn't it already closed? It's within the next. I, uh, I mean, staff not being. Yeah, staff just working solely and moving back downstairs. So just, you could give Rosemary the authority to do so within the next three to, you know, when the time is ready. But we don't, so we don't have to wait for a board meeting. It's like, I think Rosemary has authority. I was going to say, you're the only person at Randall in that office that's up. Don't have roles where I direct. Are you kidding? I, I report to her every day. So, okay, so Rosemary has, it, Rosemary has the authority. And, and so you, you, can, you can make the call. You have our graces if that's what you're asking. And, and just make sure that, you know, Randall knows he'll know. Make sure he knows too in advance. We have to reserve for a week. You could use more than a week. I'm sure we should be on the same people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. If you need to do it for longer, do it. Yeah, do what you need to do. We should just put, make sure we publish. We should make sure we get it posted, like on, like that. yeah, and on the yeah. on our Facebook page. Yeah, we'd like to get up there. Yeah, we'll get down from there. Yeah. Yeah. Another reason why the merge issue got through. 
Um, okay, so library repair, there's nothing, no updates on library That's contracts. Library grant fees. Library. Different topic. The, no, well, uh, number nine says municipal building and library repair contract. So there's nothing no, new on the library contracts. Okay. Okay. Number 10 is Department of Library grant. Yes. Well, there's the Department of Libraries grant that was just released for capital improvements for amounts of uh, 300,000 to 1.5 million. Um, if we move forward with FEMA, we're limited to 156,000 in mitigation with the building in place as is. Um, just because it's only 100% of the value of the cost put back. Right. But if, but if we move forward with FEMA and just put the building back as it is and not do any mitigation and then work maybe with the Department of Libraries, the grant is due. March 12th, it's right around the corner. And for um, what I'm asking is if you could give me permission to work with Gene. Gene and I have already been working on this. We just want to uh, potentially look at relocating or elevating in place um, the buildings within the 100 year floodplain and to see what options are out there um, and put together a proposal um, for the future of that building so that. We can get, a, I think we can do a lot more than $156,000 worth of mitigation with this grant. Um, and it's still the 15th of March. 12th. 12th. 12th of March. And I, we, can, we can do it. I, I think that's too much of a, but too much of a ask. It's, uh, it's a really simple application. So um, we should be able to find it. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Sure. That's, how, that's where I stand. You're asking for the more thoughts. Yeah. After we're down to go month. The only complication it is. I think clearly the library board of trustees is responsible for running, operating, and maintaining the library of the town. So, <laughs> right. so if there's action that needs to be done to the building itself, yes. they have our graces. So I would, yeah, so I think we should go for it. Motion. Yeah. Cool. What's our motion? I would, I would move to authorize Tom to work with the library to submit a grant for the. Treasury Department of Libraries. Tony and Tom back in with it. Uh, oh, I have the website up right here. The Department of Library grant. So the, we, we're not going to in any way. Capital project grant. Uh, Treasury fund, capital projects, fund for libraries, capital project. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll what is second. your motion? Oh. Okay, we have a second. For whatever Duncan's motion was. My motion would be to authorize Tom to work with the library board and or Jean to submit an application. To the Department of Libraries for the grant. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a second. Okay. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's an aye, Evan? Yeah. Okay. You got it. Right. We don't have to give FEMA an answer right now. So we apply for this, we don't get it, and we move forward. Yeah, we're not necessarily Yeah, we just wanted to make sure we saw. Okay, next up is Lendway grant update and decision. Oh, I was just going to do. Nope. Howard's thing. Oh, what's Howard's thing? Appointments. Okay, Tuesday night live appointments. Yep. Yes. I got two, uh, two, two people who showed an interest in flushing out our board. We've been five, so we were six last year. We're down to five now. We really resigned to do other things. And, uh, so we can bring that two openings. We got two good people who have stood, uh, stepped up. Um, and I would like your uh, approval about that. And I've got one other thing for you besides that. So um, it's a point, Charles Flom and Jeff Hollis? Yeah. Are you in motion? I was just going to say motion for a point. Uh, Duncan's all over it. There you go. Second. Okay, Duncan has the motion and, yeah. and Mark has the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. you know, one other thing, I just for heads up, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of expensive sound equipment and um, we, uh, we want to try and keep it on the field during the season. So we are going, uh, but I'm a little shaky about the security of a wooden closet that I built around the bandstand. 
So we are going to get a 16 foot storage trailer and the storage container and put it as much behind the bandstand as we can for the two months of July and August to keep our gear in. This is just a heads up, just so you know. And we're and it's obviously coming out on Tuesday night live on Monday. It's not it doesn't impact your budget. Okay. 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 What's that? It'll be visually attractive. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Howard. Uh, okay, Lendway. Thank you. Thank Lendway grant update and decision. Last email, um, the DWP grant through the USDA MCS was not viable because the the engineering. Um, Led to additional costs, which have cost the town about $120,000 or 25% of the whole project. Um, since then, that as of Sunday, in a phone call with, my, uh, with the USDA earlier today, has now gone up to 100%. So it's a $440,000 project uh, on Lenway Lane to offer that shore. It would be a 100% match. If we do FEMA, it's only um, 75% match and then the 12 and a half percent from the state. So we'd be on the hook for not match covered. It's 100 percent covered. Match means we got to hook up 100 percent covered. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So anyways, here's a project that we can do. We can have all the engineering done, we can have the work done, paid for 100 percent And at any time we can pull out before the project starts. There's no cost. Um, the last time we discussed this, there was the option of just doing nothing and just waiting for the next event, see if more slope failure happens. And um, if we move forward with this EWP grant and either funding falls out or the project is going to start to accrue costs, we can pull out and we're still on the safe track. Uh, if we move forward with FEMA and, and that project, it's going to cost the same amount. It's going to be the same engineering. It's going to be the same project. It's a different funding source. We're going to have to pay that 12.5%. Understood. So what you said. <clears throat> so you're asking for approval to go for this grant. Do we know how many linear feet we're talking about? And is it for the protection of the road? Right. This is for arboring for protection of public ways. Yeah. Of public right way. Uh -huh. And we're involved in a process where we're trying to look at the river as a and and thing. Um, if we arbor that, it's going to have an effect somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> no, Tony Lewis across the river is where it's going. Uh, I can add yeah. so that so Lenway is already armored from um, the houses at the end. Yeah. All the way, all the way. I know. Yeah, it's already armored all the way up the west side. Okay. And, and do you know how much land has been lost on the other side of the river since that's been done? A lot. I'm just saying. I'm just. It is true. I'm not, it's, it's all down Reverend Street, too. Okay. And well, here's another question. And this is just theoretical and not to like, but if, if, if we do nothing, there's another major event. It's a class three road required to repair. Even if it's not a FEMA declared emergency, we have to pay for it. And so, in, when does this grant close? Uh, I have to March. Oh, that's time meeting. Yeah, it was extended. It was February nineteenth. They extended it. The increase in time. I kind of have a question in regard to that. Hold on. Wait. 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 Let the board finish, and we'll give you a slot. Okay, so Duncan, did you have more questions or points? I, I don't. I just I just want to go on record as having said that we are supposedly trying to get involved in a regional planning process to look at the impacts of flooding right. on a river, you know, a watershed basis. Um, and I I know that armoring. I'm not saying we necessarily shouldn't do it. Do it. I'm saying that if we do it, it's a guarantee that there's going to be an impact somewhere else on the river. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So as part of this engine, like as part of the study, would part of the study 
result in understanding that impact? I, I, I think it's far too early to say whether or not. To I don't, I mean, my point is that, well, yeah, my point isn't, sorry, my point, the study was the wrong word. My point is um, going into this grant, there has to be engineering involved, right? And I would assume that part of that engineering would be about mitigating factors. I don't think it will be. I you don't think, think so? Like, I think it'll be like designed up the project. And RCS has this spec and engineering has to make sure it matches the spec and make sure that they, the contractor fulfills the spec of the plant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, how long is the stretch? I think it's 440 feet. Okay. Combined, there's two separate little stretches to finish tying them together. But when I met with them, they were, you know, they want to do it and they could protect the town infrastructure of the, the road. Is that in the area where the rail trail crosses the road? It's right in the area of the sand. Right, it's right. Yeah. Okay. There's a culvert. Okay. There's a culvert right at the end of the town, yeah. kind of right from that culvert back towards the garage. Okay. Carly. So right across from the sand pit would be my house, which has a skateboard park that's filling concrete. And now we're going to safety the road. I mean, where do you want to go? Yeah, understood. Sorry. I don't know if the engineering reports model that stuff like set. That's uh, pretty good modeling. We and should ask the, the question. What if this was changed? What happens? Yeah, here's the thing. If you don't. I mean, apply to, if you don't say apply tonight, it's not gonna, we're not going to get it because it's due before the next meeting. Yep. No, technically not, but. We have one more meeting, but right. oh, you'd have to have done all the work. Yeah. yeah. You can back out of the, we can back out of the, so if he applies for it, I mean, okay. you know, there's nothing lost. Charlie? I think you need to be aware there's a case winding its way through the Supreme Court. It makes you liable to diverting water to damages someone else's property. So if you do that, this is going to be home. Whatever, whatever you do in a flood someone's property, you can sue you for the damages to the property. Well, this isn't diverting. Yeah. But how did the how do you prove that something created something else? Did you just sue the town or we sue the USDA? Yeah, no. huh. um, you would say it's making its way through the Supreme Court, but yeah. it should be decided this year. The U.S. Supreme Court or Vermont Supreme Court? The U.S. <laughs> well, if it's not a Supreme Court precedent at the moment. Give me a heads up. I don't, no, it's no, good information. I'm, 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 I'm the one that raised the issue, so. You know. They just turned down. Air, air pollution from one state to the next. To the next. Yeah, but this is taking the private property market. I feel a little bit differently about that. Um, okay, noted. Yeah, thanks. That's important. Thank you. Eric has certainly been strongly involved in the whole concept of watershed planning. Did, can we ask Eric if he has any comments about Go for it. Did, did, did you hear what the, you, I think you were going to the The question is, we're applying, we're considering applying for a grant to armor roughly 400 feet of the memorial to protect the highway. And my comment was, if we do that, it's going to have an impact somewhere else. It may not be directly opposite. You know, we don't know that, but somewhere it's going to have an impact on that river system. It, it definitely will. You, you have to protect your highway. Example of that is uh, down there, you're familiar with it, compact road right there by the bridge. We went to the grip wrap that because it was eroding, it started taking some of the roads. We had the grip wrap with that our highway. And now that island's formed, and the river is actually on the other side of the island, and it's going to get into the state highway, cause and effect. Whenever you do something, it will, it will affect something. 
Could you have to take it back? What about those concrete mountains? So do we want those red socks? Okay, do we want to? Are we in a motion? No, we're not in a motion. And do we want? I mean, the question is, should we be going for this grant right now or not? I think we do. We're How many hours do we work for the next two weeks? Six hours this week. Is Ron, did you want to add? Yeah. Go ahead, Ron. I, I was just chuckling at uh, Thomas's 60 hours. Um, so you have a couple issues here. One is the basic window closing on an opportunity for a hundred thousand, you know, hundred percent grant. <laughs> the other issue is the public infrastructure that you're protecting, which is uh, single family house access, as far as I know. Uh, the third part is if that road washes out in the next storm, that's not a disaster, what would the town's position be in? Are you going to add, you know, the $400,000 cost to stabilize that river shore? Or are you going to close the road and ask the homeowner to find another way in? So there's a whole, it's not as simple as, you know, armoring a, a 1200 foot section or whatever it is. Uh, yes, the town of Johnson has armored substantial lengths of the Lamoille River over time. This is one of the sections that has not been armored. By doing that, you're sending the water up to a certain degree, which impacts things like the village market or the wastewater plant. You're also sending water downstream quicker to impact the downstream people. So those are all true facts once you armor. So the, the natural flow of the river, the floodplain, the, the natural uh, changing of oxbows, all that stuff is interrupted by armoring. So it, it, it's a bigger uh, global kind of discussion. What, what is Johnson's floodplain management priorities? Now you worked with regional planning and I think Duncan mentioned before the whole study from uh, Hyde Park to Johnson and the Guyan River, uh, trying to mitigate or you know uh, provide flood carrying capacity upstream so that the downstream impacts are reduced. When you armor, you're doing the opposite, which is accelerating the flood impacts. And whether whether that's by increasing the elevation or whether that's by increasing the the velocity downstream, something does happen when you constrict a floodplain. So in this particular case, USDA is 100% on board with funding the armoring of that section of, let's call it the Lenway Lane River Shore for better lack of, you know, better word. And they will have an engineer hired probably by the town of Johnson. So you'll get a second bite at the plan, so to speak. The engineer will come back with a proposed plan, proposed cost. And my understanding of USDA EWP is that they will stay with you through the whole project at, at that uh, approved 100% grant level. You will have at the end a well-protected driveway, <laughs> basically, to that one house at the end of the road. And you will have a constraint on the river that's uh, sort of uh, consistent with the past practices of the town of Johnson which is armoring and sending water downstream quicker. So I, I think the discussion is really good for not just Johnson, but for a lot of towns about what you do when you have your main core of your town in a flood plain. How, how you deal with this case, it's, it's, really di it's really difficult. You don't have a lot of public interest on Lenway Lane south of the damaged area. You do have a private residential area that's sort of on an island or plateau in a very active floodplain zone. Uh, maybe the house shouldn't be there. Maybe it should be. That's that's a judgment call. So do you take advantage of the 100% money just because it's 100% money? I mean, people have philosophical issues against that. Uh, do you sit back and say, all right, well, let's get this thing started because it's what we've traditionally done and let's see what the engineering produces. And we'll have the engineering company come back to a select board meeting and decide what to do after that. 
that's that's an option. Uh, so it's I just I just want to raise the point that it's not it's not as easy and 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 I, I'm not a fan of doing things the way they always have been, so to speak. So maybe maybe the hybrid solution is to apply for the grant with a caveat of uh, holding judgment on construction until the engineering work is done, so that you can look at the issues that you're struggling with now about the secondary impacts, negative impacts, uh, whether you should have the class three road there, you know, whether that's the only public interest you have. Uh, I, I, I don't wanna be clouded by the fact that it's a hundred percent grant. I don't think that's the only issue. It's, it's more about what do you do next year when it happens again? What about the west side of the river when that when those private property owners continue to lose you know acreage? Um, you know it's 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 bigger. So I don't I don't I, I, can't, I don't have the answer necessarily except the window for closing on the grant funding to do the engineering is closing. You know that that is closing. Right. That'll be yeah. that'll be gone. But anyway, thanks yeah, for your time. Understood. Thanks, Ron. Yep. Uh, okay, thoughts. What do we want to do about the grant? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? If we don't have a second, it'll die. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Duncan, that was an aye. Shane, where are you at? I'm going to vote no on it. Okay. Uh, eyes have it. So we'll at least get the application out there and make decisions a little bit later. Yeah. Um, I won't be on the board when this comes up again, I'm sure, but I think that winding LCPC into this discussion is important. So Tom may be letting them know that we're going for this and that we're gonna need their assistance with impact to mitigation. If there's any way to structure the grant to do what Ron said, sort of you know, look at, have them, you know, is there any way they can assess what the impact of the board might be? Um, and we're reporting back to the board on that. Did talk to Mike about, I'm going to call him tomorrow, I'm just saying, about having LCPC maybe in the consumer grant for us to spend 100%. There's no need for me to do a force account for us to make a little money because it's 100% and LCPC does it, you know, but, you know, let them get paid out. Does that make sense? Um, all the, not necessarily, I'm, I'm all in favor of accepting money to offset your salary. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it'll be, yeah, yeah, I guess we'll, yeah, yeah. Anyways, but um, definitely getting LCPC involved, at least in the study of the, the idea that it's coming. And then yeah, I'll make sure that um, I did talk about reimbursement and we can be reimbursed as invoices come in with this, which is good. Um, so it won't be a big of a cash flow issue, but I think I need probably need to check on phases to make sure that we can stop after various completed phases. Well, LCPC has done some pretty good modeling. Um, Ron made mention of you know, some river modeling that they've done between by Park and Johnson, so that might be really useful. They have really good modeling, yeah, like to yeah. the point that in December, Evan and I were asking them very specific questions, and they were giving us real. Certainly begs the question of we're spending four hundred thousand dollars to arm our private driveway. Are we taking four hundred thousand dollars away? I don't think we should describe it as a. We should not. Driveway. It's a class three highway. You know, whether or not it's just one person that lives there. Yeah. But at this point in time, it's a class three island. Yeah, and we're responsible for it. We're not totally responsible for it. And we can have the discussion whether or not we should be. Right. But it's it's a class three highway, regardless of how many people live on it. If, if it's a class four, we'd have to maintain any bad ones will wash from the river itself. Or 12 feet disappear. 
Okay, moving on. So we got our answer, moving on. Uh, town meeting preparation and planning. We, there's lots of different sub categories to this one. Um, where is that? Yeah. yeah, I forwarded it to not to everybody. I think I don't think. Yeah, I forwarded it to Tom. By any of these things you're talking about, daycare, daycare service. Yeah. yeah. I think we need your help with all of them that don't involve rosemary and voting, meaning sixth grade class trip usually does lunch. They're not doing that this year. They're not doing it this year. We're doing it. So, Mark is. Oh, you are, Mark? Okay. Seriously, you take a couple whole trend right on? Perfect. So you're not going to be sitting with us during the town meeting? Okay, well, you have things assigned to you. I don't know if you noticed. That's what happened. Okay. Uh, if that's what, it's going to happen again this year. She asked about it. She initiated it when she was on the select board and has been helping with finding contacts for people who can help with. Have all of the town committees been? But the, these people who are listed, Joey, Carrie, Katie, they all have teenagers who, yeah, and that's why they're listed here because they, they're teenagers. Or are um, they certified? Um, I think I don't know if they're certified, but that's a good point. Yes, good point. I think they were. I think we asked that, but I don't know for sure. I think so too. Maybe there'd be all those. Easy people there, you know. But really, I think really it'll shoulders to shoulders. It's got to be a lot of you know old people with blue jackets. No, you hadn't. No, I, I had a life before I did this. Okay, the other topics around town meeting prep and planning. Do you have other questions around prep and planning? <laughs> okay, they have tables. Sometimes they have tables. I'm sending everybody to Rosemary as far as I know the historical society is planning on coming in. Recreation is planning on doing coffee. Uh huh. We're going to have some music this year. I don't know. Yeah, well, Somebody designers. That was Gary Clark and his son. Yeah. Roland. Why do we even need to be involved? Rosemary has all the planning. Let's solve the select board and let Rosemary run. There was some yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. The Tom's got a lot of action. Yeah. Signing yeah. officer. Alpha. So, Tom, you'll reach out to the Boy Scouts. What, what are they doing? The color guard. The flag. Um, what about dedication? Are we submitting? I don't know if Jane will be there. I don't know if she usually goes. Do we usually do the dedication? Do we? Are we gonna? Yeah, we usually dedication? give Tom. We usually give the town report to the person who is dedicated. I was, I was so, going to say, is there a clean copy? Yeah. But like that needs to fall into our agenda for the day. For example. Like if we have color guard, then the dedication, then opening up into articles, you know. Dave Bloom's gonna be here. Dave mm -hmm. will be. But then we're not gonna take lunch until they're all done. Sometimes he breaks in the middle. Depends on how long it goes. Yeah, budget papers are coming. 
Because usually we did the presentation of the dedication during the hearing, very first article, hearing of the report. Oh, uh, uh, okay, perfect. Okay. Eric, can I suggest you to help with setting up that agenda, just to like a story past an event list? Yeah. He's going to check the schedule. Yeah, this <laughs> first one was carved into a rock. <laughs> Probably still got it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I think he knows that. I hope he knows. There was something else I was going to ask too, but I forget what it was now. Wait, you had something where it was very. Seems like we have that new grade project there by the schools. Oh, yeah. Grade advice. Uh, um, okay, we're getting off topic though. So I emailed everyone also earlier today um, with suggested topics and speakers. Um, you all can definitely just say no, but I listed out the topics we had last year, added other topics and who I think could speak to them. Um, this is one of those planning the agenda of a meeting as far as I'm concerned anyway. I think we can continue it in email if we need to, but if there's anything that you're specifically concerned about, well, just to clarify, is everyone going to be there? Mark, you'll be there. Duncan, you'll be there. Yeah, I, I will also be there. I might be um, I will have to leave by three, um, but I'm assuming oh. that we will have gone through most everything by that point. Yeah, we'll be in good shape before then. Hopefully. Oh, I think if, if we go past one, I'll be surprised. I might, yeah, yeah, sink into my chair a little. Uh, I'm going to cancel the and, eclipse. So you gave the eclipse to me. We're not going to have it this year. <laughs> Why does go ahead, yeah. wait, 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 go ahead, Shane. Keep the, going, the, Shane. The only um, one that you gave me that I would ask maybe, uh, I, I think <laughs> Duncan might be a better. Uh, person to report on the grocery store because he's been more directly in communication with Parmelo. Um, but I'm I'm happy to take it. You know, Duncan's got plenty of others. So, Shane, I want you in on the town village merger. Uh, Seems how, how you um enticed me into that discussion. Okay, we'll take you off the grocery store. Got it. Okay. Put them on, put them on. And you and Mark can argue about the merger <laughs> if it comes up. Yeah, I gotta sit down. I'm cold. Though. It's fine. It's fine. I just wanted to bring it up and make sure that everyone saw that it's out there. Mark's the only one that's gonna bring it up. He can speak to it. If somebody brings it up, I'll speak to them. Okay. The other items around um, preparing. The other th items around preparing for town meeting is. The merger info sheet, Duncan. Yeah, did everybody get a chance to look at it? I think you have a copy in the packet. Yes. My draft. So my for for anybody that might not be aware of it, my my thought process was that I think there's a lot of people out there wondering about why the article is out there and what the article means. So what I'm proposing <laughs> is a very neutral statement that basically says we were submitted a petition. We were not taking an official position on Article 10, mm -hmm. um, but providing information about what it would actually mean and providing a copy of the statute. So I, I would like to propose, and, and I'll tell you right up front, credit where credit's due, Tom brought this up with me um, and said he's been getting some calls from people saying that they can have information about the merger and what it's all about. So my my thought would be post this on front porch forum or something similar, put it on the town webpage and put it on Facebook. We'll put it on that TikTok or and have yeah. copies of it at and yeah. potentially have copies at the town meeting. Yeah. Maybe we'll put it on the website with a the link on the yeah. yeah. I think it's it's well written. It doesn't take a stance one side or the other. It's just information. I tried to be as neutral as possible. I like yeah. it too. Yeah, I think, I think it's great. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah, thanks, like Tom and Duncan. I like it when they're like indented. Yeah, I okay. do. Yeah, okay. That was Tom. What, Mark? Let us put out the 
No, I didn't. Oh, that's fine. No, I didn't. Okay, the next topic is highway capital budget. Yeah, so the the capital budget um, that appears in the town report is a little bit different than the one that we actually approved. So my suggestion is here's the one that we actually approved. My suggestion would be to simply have make up a hundred copies or whatever, have them available at town meeting to tell people at the outset. Um, you know, page 30 could be replaced with that's the spot that Tom was about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think we should put that on the website also. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure why the spreadsheet. I think when they the paper that comes out, there's like a tab that auto populates, like it's printed in the town court. And I think when we either set some aside, and the formula must have been broken. And yeah. That is something anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Is. Whatever. Yeah. You know. um, there's nothing we can do about it now yeah. except try to get copies out. Um, the other thing around that is that on the town website, we should put it at the same place where the town report gets published. And can we get the, we don't have, we're missing a bunch of years for the town report. Can we get those out there? Mm -hmm. um, but that, that should link to the updated file should be right underneath the town report link so that they're in the same place. It's a small thing, but the guys were wondering if and myself if we could make our years of service accurate for all the submissions. <laughs> yeah, I'd like is to that that in the, is yeah, it's not accurate. Okay. You're yeah. talking about only the first few pages. So, um, <laughs> who is Ted? Is there any Mark, how do we get like the June thirtieth? Did we get it? How about eight? Well, maybe that's a communication thing, but I certainly that's June. They asked me about the actual We we mail them. We mail them a town report. They don't even live here. They have. Who is this? Don't don't have enough time to post the signs, right? That's a big task. Um. So, Jason. I think that at town meeting, we can speak to it. Um, I think we should just speak to it at town meeting. And if there are significant milestones, when is your 10 year anniversary? What day did you start? Oh, September. Okay, so you would be two, you'd be nine years then according to this, because it's based on June 30, right? I don't know. It's going to be based on their start date, like the date compared to June 30th of 2023. Oh, because those like the they're back. It, yeah. Yeah. It's fiscal year. Why do we have this? That's that's the master. That's not the thing. Right. Wait, we're changing subjects right in the middle of having a discussion. <laughs> so. It's based on June 30th of 2023, Jason. So I think it's minus a year that you're thinking, but it still probably needs to be updated. So we can just mention that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, tell them we're sorry. It was just a, a clerical error. Um, okay. What is your question now, Evan? Move on. I'm good. Just everybody um, in in the packet. Um, I have asked Tom earlier in the day for a copy of the full spreadsheet and the highway capital budget and salaries. So he just made copies of that for everybody. But that is the same one that you need all this, correct? No changes. Yeah. yeah. After season two. Yeah. Yes. Post season two. Yeah. Perfect. That's a cute. Okay. So highway capital budget, we have a plan. We're good. Anything else? Town meeting prep. My only question is, we we have a meeting scheduled the day the day before. 
I guess, you know, we could cancel it at meeting, but I don't think it's a bad idea to have the meeting and do nothing but talk about it. Hey, has meeting next. Like before, maybe not. Maybe we can do it in the municipal building. And so we're not going to do appointments till the, the day after. A no. week and a half after. No, no the, the day, day after. after. Day after. There's a select board meeting the day after. Wednesday. Okay. Uh, I guess, one so that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm going to have a make up for how much I've been missing. Uh, how, yeah, so that has well, to, I mean, it won't be Wednesday for me. It has, be Wednesday for you. has to be one yeah. on Tuesday. <laughs> or I was waiting for you to say that, Beth. Thanks, Shane. Uh, Mark well, looks confused for a second. We're not meeting that night. We're meeting during the That's day. True. Yeah, but I won't be working that time. Um, okay. The only thing I would ask with regard to appointments, and I think we went through this last year, is can somebody, Tom, <laughs> check with everybody to make sure that they want to run? Uh, I've started getting emails of people up right. warning me of who's not running and looking. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't care. I, yeah, I, I said Tom, but it doesn't. It does, it can't, that could be something that you delegate because that's there. Certainly. Yeah. 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 Delegate to it's one of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Delegate it to somebody. Maybe, maybe you know, between you and Rosemary, you can figure out whether Lydia or Susie or whoever needs to do that. But I think it would be nice for us when we make those appointments to actually the meeting know that right? somebody. I would strongly, to... strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that everyone continue to use that appointment spreadsheet and make changes throughout the year. Because we went through a lot last year to figure out terms for everybody. Yeah, so I think that it's really important that it is consistently maintained. Yep. Did you make the modifications tonight? I did not make them tonight. They need to be updated. But I have on the fly during meetings before updated people on that list. Um, so you have an updated version. It's always updated. Yeah, it's the same link. There's no updated version. It's always just system shared, edited. Except for she didn't put in the two for tonight. The two for tonight. No, I didn't put in the two for tonight. I have people. Yeah. Well, at the very least, all the select board members know when their term ends here, so that's something. I think we've worked through a lot of committees and commissions on when their terms are, too, so hopefully everybody is mostly on the same page. Uh, we have one last agenda item, which is Form PVR 4155, Certificate of No Appeal, Pursuit Pending. This is the first time I've seen a request to that. Yeah. I would make a motion that we um, sign the notification of not Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Rosemary, do you have a copy of it? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Um, okay, we'll, we'll pass it around. Mark's already signing, good. Um, pass it around and get it done. Uh, I would. I had a quote copied. I'm sorry that I lost my pay, my clipboard, but it was a quote from Eric last year that said, "I'm the lamest duck ever," <laughs> or something to that to that effect. And then went on to say like how he wasn't going to do something. <laughs> so just so you know, I'll be using that quote very soon. When you see it, "I'm the lamest duck ever," it's actually quoting Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, are we making any decision on the regular rescheduled meeting? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Mark's bringing pizza. Yeah. You're going to fire up the oven the day before oh, and check it out. I do. I think it might be. Okay. 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 I think the state's meeting is like 12 o'clock. Okay. I think that unless there's any other business, we are adjourned. Uh, oh. Do we have any executive session items? Nope. There was that one that we're holding off until we have to. It really kicked right into us. It's not a good job. It's nine o'clock.
Yeah, it was a year early. Yeah.